Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today I want to give you the number one sign of a church junkie. And we know, my friend, that people who are addicted to uh, substances that can harm the body, harm the mind, and when they are smoking, my friend, you when, when you get around it, and they blowing all this smoke off into the atmosphere, you can, you can smell it. You can sniff it out. And I want to show you precisely when you are in the atmosphere, or shall I say, in the midst of a religious traditionalist who likely does not know the Christ, they have been intoxicated with the church, the false church, their traditions and their teachings. It's like smoking crack, my friend. And once you become addicted, friend, you can find yourself going through withdrawal symptoms once you come to the truth and the knowledge that Jesus Christ came to set us at liberty. I want us to pay attention to a very powerful scripture that was penned in the book of Romans chapter 8, 14, because this is our emancipation. This is a very uh, clear indicator, my friend, that when you truly have met Christ and you understand that you were sold, you were bought with his shed blood, and that now, my friend, we are moving towards having relationship by the Spirit of God that leads us into fellowship with one another. If you are not careful, if you begin to eat, if you will, if you begin to to, to masticate the traditions of men and their commandments. See, see the false church, you got to understand, my friend, it was the religious people that killed Jesus. We must never forget this. It is the strict adherence to any doctrine, any tradition, that has absolutely nothing to do with morality, with, with being filled with the spirit of God and doing the work that God has called each believer to become a student, a disciple of Christ, and then go make disciples, help other people find Christ. Let me give you the number one sign before I read the scripture, my friend, that you have been smoking... And some, some folk lace their cigarettes. They be having all kind of stuff they doing to get these drugs in their body, my friend. They'll put it in their veins. They'll lace their cigarette. They be smoking their marijuana. Mm. Intoxicated. The number one sign that you are a church junkie. You, you Watch this. Not a Christ. Please pardon the pun. Not a Christ fanatic, not a Christ junkie, if you will. No, you, 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 you're, you're hooked on teachings of men, not Christ. And the number one way you will know it, my friend, is because you do not fish for men. You're constantly trying to fish for members of your church and your denomination. And the kingpins, which are mostly pastors, the kingpins send out the recruits. And when they come around you, my friend, you can smell that stench of like marijuana. You can smell that crack. If you come in that atmosphere, you can smell it. And the number one thing that they are bashing and <laughs> who's your covering? Where's your local church home at? That's the number one thing because they don't fish for men. 
They are fishing for recruits for their kingdoms. And they send out the street guys. Kingpins sit back and live off of it, but they send out the recruits. So my friend, I want you to know that any person that's invoking fear about you not coming to church, and please hear me, Sister Sharon is all for church. I'm all for fellowship of the brethren because we are the church. We are the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. But what I'm against is what my Lord and Savior is against, and that is religious people who have secret agendas to put innocent people and unlearned people under their dominions and people who are walking around like they are so pious and religious with their collars and their robes and their first ladies and their armor bearers. And they're putting people under mind control, pulling them from the Christ. Oh, I got a problem with that. I got a big problem with that. So, so my friend, what I want you to understand, the number one thing they do is badger you about the church. You don't have nothing good to say about the church, Sister Sharon. Let me speak and be clear. The true church of Jesus Christ is alive and well. The true ecclesia is not broken down. The true ecclesia is not bound by mortal men. Jesus Christ still has lordship over the true and the living organism called the body of Christ. But where many of us are confused and we've been tricked, what we're calling church is not the church. Because he said, it's in you. The kingdom is in you. So wherever I am, we haven't tried. I'm here. I'm not coming to church. I am moving about in a temple coming in communion and fellowship with other believers. That's it. We, we, we don't come to church to worship the bishop, the pastor, the first lady, the deacons. We're not here to, to, to uh, sing your praises for an hour and a half anniversary celebration. We're not here to celebrate your name, your birthday, or your calling. That's not what we're here for, my friend. We are here to lift up the only one that shed the blood. So when you come around a, a spiritual junkie, a church junkie, they leave the stench of fear and guilt wherever they go. They try to put you on a guilt trip, my friend, that you are some, some kind of way of no good nothing. Number one. Let's get this text. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 13, 14, for all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery that returns you to fear, but you receive the spirit of sonship by whom we cry, Abba, Father. But my friend, when you are no longer being led by the spirit, you, you come under the dominion of men who provoke fear by telling you, touch not my anointed. That's, 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 that's one of the exhales of, of a spiritual junkie, a, 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 a church crackhead, if you will. I'm not belittling people who need delivery, but I'm trying to give us an illustration. They have a scent. When they exhale out of their mouth all of this foolishness, my friend, oh, you go catch that stench. Their leaders, their kingpins will tell you, touch not my anointed. That's one, that's another sign. You are, you are intoxicated, my friend, off of the false church because you say the same thing your kingpin say. You will also know it, my friend, because you ask people what church you belong to. Instead of asking them, are you a follower of Jesus Christ? You will ask them, my friend, who is your covering before you ask them, are you covered by the blood? Are you living holy? Are you living right? But see, friend, when you've been smoking that church stuff, you're only concerned about church membership and church attendance. Another symptom that you are, my friend, a church addict, a church junkie, 
You will always worship the pastor and his first lady. You will call them yours. That's my bishop. That's my first lady. My friend, you smoking and you you are addicted and you need to be detoxed. You need to go on a, a, a detox program of the Christ. You need to get to the Holy Spirit and let him begin to exercise and get all this out of your system. You say stuff like this. If you a pastor, you need to go find you a Bible believing church instead of telling them, no, you need to go ask God now. If you really say you've come to the kingdom to fill you with the Holy Ghost, let's make it clear. You cannot come into the kingdom without the Holy Spirit. But the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 11, God said, if you who know how to give good gifts, how much more shall I and will I give the Holy Ghost to those who ask? So we want to ask and we want to encourage people to get to know the comforter. But instead, a religious church junkie only wants to know where do you fellowship? Who is your covering? <clears throat> when the last time you paid your pledge? Did you keep up with your pledge? This is all they want to know, my friend. So I want you to be aware, my friend, that if you have been slipped, what, what I like to call a spiritual Mickey, you've been drugged by church, you're not going to know what your ministry is. And if you are in ministry, it's limited to singing on the choir, being a usher. You do not fish for the souls of men. That is the number one sign that you have been smoking, if you will. You've been smoking church crack. And it's time, my friend, to admit you have a problem. You are spiritually sick and you need delivered because the sons of God are led by his spirit. And if his spirit says to come out of a place, and let me be clear, just because a person leaves a church, a fellowship, doesn't mean they left God. And I have given you throughout all these videos on my channel and most of the teachings and exhortations about this false movement of church membership. Paul made it very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25 and 27, there should be no schism. There should be no separating, but the members sh should have the same care one for another. And then he went on in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. He said, I hear that there are contentions among you at Chloe's house. And they were going around saying, it, you know, I'm of Paul's group. I'm of Apollo's group. And Paul said, wait a minute. Has any of us died for you? Were we crucified for your sin? This is why, my friend, when you've been smoking from that church uh, dope, <laughs> you're not pushing hope for eternity. You're pushing church membership. And it is a violation of the scriptures, my friend. You shouldn't call anybody your bishop, nobody your father. No, no, no. Please, my friend, go study it for yourself. First Corinthians chapter one, Paul said, is Christ divided? Was I Paul? This is what he said. Was I crucified for you? So why are you saying you are of me? No, you are of the body of Christ. Oh, my friend, he that has an ear, come on, y'all got to wake up. Because one of the things a spiritually uh, church crackhead, if you will, pardon the pun, they police church attendance. This is all they're interested in. Why? Because they've been sent out by those spiritual kingpins called pastors. And when I say that, my friend, I am speaking of corrupt-minded men who have turned away from the faith. They are apostate and they have brainwashed the masses. It's time to admit my name is Sharon Johnson and I am a church crack addict because Jesus is not going to set us at liberty till we repent. 
that God, I think I've been slipped a Mickey. I've been drugged. I don't talk about you, Jesus. I don't think about you. I'm fornicating. I'm smoking. I'm masturbating. I'm doing all these things, but yet I show up for church. As soon as the doors is open, I'm in the house. God say, no, you've been slipped a Mickey. God say, you got to guard your heart, my friend. You have to guard it with all diligence. You got to look into your heart like a, a sharp shooter, a sniper on the roof. Do I really have the kingdom of God? Or am I just going through the motions? Oh, my friend, you got to ask yourself these questions because Jesus sets at liberty sons of God. And you cannot put rules and restrictions on grown folk. You got young folk in their 30s and 40s asking 50 and 60 year olds, who's your church? Who's your pastor and covering? This is foolishness. So my friend, if that's you, you got to come out with your hands up. I am a church junkie and I am spewing out all of this poison, harassing the body, harassing true followers. Who's your bishop? Mm. You got to be connected, mm. connected to the Christ, not the kingpins. So with that said, my friend, if it's you and you know that you are coming out of corruption, please hear me and let me be clear. Church fellowship, it is the most beautiful thing when the real church, the ecclesia, the called out ones come together. Jesus said, where there's two or more, I will be in the midst. It's a beautiful thing. So when I am constantly speaking of the church in this channel, I am speaking of corruption, my friend. But it is a beautiful thing to find a true shepherd or a person that is truly after Christ's heart. Because those truly are the ones, my friend, that God sends forth. He does not send forth the wolf. And it's up to you to inspect the fruit. God bless you, my friend. If you are not sincerely seeking to share your faith in Jesus Christ, you have not met him yet. You're just going through the motions, friend. The number one sign of a true spirit field, I once was a sinner, but now I'm found. The number one thing to look for in your life, you want to help people find the true and the living Christ. If that's not what's in your heart, you got to go cry out for your soul because you haven't met him yet. And if you can honestly say, that you are constantly badgering other people about what church they go to, who's they're covering. If you can honestly admit, I think I've been duped. Oh, your best days are ahead of you, my friend. Don't be condemned. Just repent. That's why these messages is coming for us to examine ourselves. That's what a preacher, teacher, exhorter, that's what we're supposed to do. We're here to prepare you to meet God. We are not here to give you a feel good and tickle the ear. We are here, let me speak for me. I am here to help you, my friend, find the true and the living Christ. He lives. This I know. I love you, my friend. Be wise and be set free in the name of Jesus. God bless you, my friend.